Try as though video game publishers might to disguise an incoming turkey in their marketing, we as players can usually sniff out a game that's been through the developmental ringer. Yet sometimes a game ends up plummeting far beneath even our already low expectations, delivering an experience that's best described as an abject disaster worth neither your time nor money. Here are just a few of them. I'm Sai for WhatCulture.com and these are 10 video games even worse than everyone expected. Number 10, Fast and Furious Crossroads. While a Fast and Furious game theoretically had a ton of potential, the track record of video games based on movies being what it is, most were simply expecting Fast and Furious Crossroads to be a bog standard Need for Speed clone with some franchise branding slapped on it. Even with Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez and Tyrese Gibson lending their voices and likenesses to the title, Crossroads looks more like a fake game you'd see in a movie than something that was actually released worldwide. Given the film series trend for hilariously gravity action, it's baffling just how unimaginative and forgettable the cinematic gameplay is throughout. But worse than that, it's saddled with atrocious handling, an awful camera and woefully dated graphics which feel a whole generation behind. This all evidently turned players off enough that the multiplayer suite became an arid, unpopulated wasteland within days of the game's release. The ultimate vote of no confidence came from publisher Bandai Namkai themselves though, who delisted Crossroads barely 18 months after release. Presumably Presumably because they didn't want to renew their licensing agreement with Universal for a certified dud of a game nobody was buying. Number 9. The Quiet Man Expectations were already borderline subterranean for The Quiet Man prior to release, given that Square Enix scarcely discussed the action-adventure game at all, after giving it a surprisingly fanfare-filled unveiling at E3 2018. At the very least, its fusion of traditional beat-em-up gameplay and lengthy live-action video sequences, alongside minimalistic sound design to convey its deaf protagonist's perspective, would make it a bold swing and a miss, right? Well, The Quiet Man was quietly dumped on digital storefront in late 2018, and failed at basically every single thing that it attempted to do. The fighting gameplay was clunky and awkward, the live action elements turned out more confusing than entertaining, and the muted sound design did less to build empathy with the game's lead character than leave players tuning out of the story in record time. With the right approach, The Quiet Man could have absolutely been a fascinating step forward for representation in video games, but this bungled throughline unfortunately rendered it a pure laughing stock. Number 8, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. With the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater franchise categorically being on the skids by the early 2010s, there wasn't much hope that developer Robomodo, responsible for some of the series' worst entries, could get it back on track with 2015's Pro Skater 5. All the same, it was sold as a back-to-basics entry for the franchise, ditching the goofy plastic skateboard peripherals and getting back to the purity of traditional skateboarding gameplay. With fans vocally complaining about the game's dated graphics, mere months from release, few were expecting great things from Tony Hawk 5, but passable entertainment that reminded them of better days that, at least, was a realistic goal. But the game was very rightfully panned upon release by critics and fans alike for its clunky skating mechanics, lacklustre visuals, which Robomodo tried to conceal by shifting to a cell shaded style shortly before release, abundance of glitches, poorly designed levels, and overall lack of charm. When it later emerged that the game was developed in just a few short months before the licensing agreement between Tony Hawk and Activision expired, Inspired, not a single solitary soul was surprised. Its failure well and truly killed any remaining goodwill the series had, that is, until 2020's remaster of the first two games finally won fans back. Number 7, Redfall. Oh, how we all wanted so desperately to believe that Arcane Austin's new squad-based FPS Redfall would be a pleasant surprise, even though the pre-release material suggested it'd simply be another generic, flavourless entry into the overcrowded genre. After all, as long as the gameplay was basically functional, it could be a fun time with three friends on Xbox Game Pass, right? Yet Redfall was an even emptier, shallower experience than anyone could have seen coming. From the embarrassingly brain-dead AI to the boring, repetitive mission objectives and progression, a nothing burst of a story, empty world and unsatisfying gameplay, it failed in every way that a game of this type possibly could. Playing with friends proved only slightly less miserable than going solo if only because you could bond over your collective bemusement at what Arcane served up. While most were expecting a game that would at least be basic dumb fun with pals, Redfall ended up feeling fundamentally unfinished, enough that Xbox boss Phil Spencer even apologised for it just two days after release. Number 6, Superman 64. 
The pre-release hubbub around Superman 64 wasn't exactly optimistic at the best of times. Its official gameplay reveals at three consecutive E3s failed to move the needle much with fans or critics, unaided by numerous delays which saw it release roughly 18 months later than planned. But a Superman game on the N64's then beefy hardware? It surely couldn't miss entirely, could it? Ultimately, Superman 64 was a historic train wreck unlike anybody could have ever seen coming. From the tedious, confusing and frustrating gameplay to the underwhelming visuals, repetitive soundtrack and excess of garish kryptonite fog to paper over the game's short draw distance, it's a title that categorically failed to deliver the expected wish fulfillment of playing as the Man of Steel. Despite selling well out of the gate, Superman 64 was near universally panned by the press, prompting Titus Interactive to develop a reworked version for the PlayStation, yet their licensing agreement with Warner Brothers ultimately expired before they could finish it. Almost a quarter century later, Superman 64 still lives on as one of the worst games of all time, and with damn good reason. Number 5. Umbrella Core while few were expecting greatness from Resident Evil's tactical shooter spin-off Umbrella Core, the general pre-release feeling was that it would be a firmly mid-offering in the vein of Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City from a few years earlier. Yet Operation Raccoon City ultimately looks great compared to Umbrella Core, which couldn't even reach the basic competence of being a formulaic squad-based shooter, with the Resident Evil branding clumsily plastered over it. The fact that Umbrella Core doesn't even have Resident Evil in its title could suggest that Capcom themselves were basically embarrassed of its existence, and frankly, who could blame them? Movement and gunplay feel bad, it does absolutely nothing interesting with its franchise identity across both the single player and multiplayer modes, it has a dead generic aesthetic and resolutely feels like a game brought to market with all the grace and enthusiasm of somebody passing a kidney stone. Moreover, its concurrent players on PC peaked at a pathetic 428 people during release week, before promptly falling off a cliff and never recovering. Ring. Number 4. The Simpsons Wrestling The idea of a Simpsons themed wrestling game was certainly unhinged enough to get people's attention, but nobody had much in the way of hope for it, especially with gameplay footage making it clear just how hideously lo-fi the visuals were. But no matter how bad you expected the game as a whole to be, The Simpsons Wrestling was oh so much worse. Whether you're a Simpsons fan or a wrestling fan, or if you're interested in this game, possibly both, it's got desperately little worthwhile to offer beyond featuring voice work from The Simpsons' actual voice cast. Even if you can somehow forgive the persistent eyesore that is the game's aesthetic, the gameplay is embarrassingly rough. It simply doesn't feel good to play with stiff, clunky animations and crap controls which incentivize players to mindlessly button mash their way to victory. In the right hands, The Simpsons Wrestling could have been a fun bonkers romp, but with such a bare bones, visually repellent treatment, it's instead destined to live on as a mere point and stare curio on lists like this one. Number 3, Fallout 76. As awesome as the concept of an online Fallout game sounded on paper, any reasonable fan of the series was acutely aware of Bethesda's tendency to deliver jank-filled experiences, and how that would surely only multiply exponentially with a multiplayer framework involved. And so most people did not expect a fundamentally enjoyable experience at all, and at launch they got Fallout 76, not a fundamentally enjoyable experience at all. Where to begin, even for a Bethesda game it launched, packed to the gills with infuriating potential game-breaking bugs, the available quests were dull and repetitive, the lack of human NPCs made the world feel barren, and even the online functionality felt held together with loose duct tape. Though Bethesda did improve the game with subsequent updates, for many players it was simply too little too late, as they'd already moved on to other games that actually respected their time and money from the jump. Number 2. The Lord of the Rings Gollum Expectations were certainly middling at best for Daedalic Entertainment's The Lord of the Rings Gollum, which finally released recently after over 18 months of delays. Between a series of underwhelming trailers and gameplay clips showing off its mediocre visuals and generic stealth action gameplay, this felt like a modest double-A cash-in on the Rings IP that would receive mixed reviews and then be quietly forgotten. Yes, Gollum's gameplay is as soulless and blandly formulaic as it looks from the marketing, but the final visuals actually were markedly worse 
worse than in the trailers, with Gollum in particular appearing considerably less detailed than customers had been led to believe. This is without even bringing up the glut of launch day glitches and the horrible user interface, ensuring that few have even bothered playing it to the end of the over-egged 10-hour campaign. Few were expecting Gollum to be a pleasant surprise, but for it to not only be 2023's consensus worst game so far, but arguably one of the worst games of the last decade, is truly dispiriting. And number one, Postal 3. Look, none of the Postal games are objectively good, but in the very least, Postal 2 was a moderately amusing time waster where you could creatively raise hell and uh, hang out with Gary Coleman. In theory, Postal 3 should have basically just delivered more of the trashy, deranged same, albeit with shinier graphics, yet developers running with scissors made the ill-advised decision to outsource development to a Russian publisher. Akella hired the aptly named Trash Masters to make the game. Unsurprisingly, this resulted in development straying from running with scissors his original vision for the sequel, in turn delivering an atrocious end product that was far more linear than the second game, while packed with bugs and charmlessly edgy quote-unquote humour. Evidently, Postal 3 even turned out far worse than running with scissors themselves could have ever anticipated, causing them to remove the game from their own store, with their company head bluntly calling it a sh** best. An expansion to Postal 2, Paradise Lost, was released by Running With Scissors a few years later to considerably more positive response. To draw a firm line under Postal 3, it even retconned that game's event into a dream sequence that never actually happened. The recently released Postal 4, No Regerts, may have been an abject disaster, but it still wasn't as soul-destroyingly terrible as the third game. Rewinding back to Fallout 76 for just a moment, there are lots of people who say that the game is actually finally worth playing. We collated a bunch of titles like this into another video you can watch called 8 Despised Video Games You Should Play Now. Don't forget to leave a comment down below which of these games is the worst in your opinion and other video games that would fit in with this theme. I've been Cypher for What Culture and have a good week.